floriculture in permaculture. Flowers can be an effective component of a permaculture farm. Flowers add aesthetic value to a permaculture farm. They attract pollinators, for example, bees and butterflies. They also attract beneficial insects and birds that can help control pests. Flowers can be a high value cash crop. Floriculture is a billion dollar industry. Sale in Canada in 2018 was 1.56 billion. Floriculture is the ninth largest agriculture sector in Canada and the sixth largest in Ontario. Ontario contribute more than half of Canadian seeds at 51.2%. Incorporate local flowers that thrive in your area and grow heirloom varieties that are not available in supermarkets. In Ontario, the big Ontario brand is helping make locally grown flowers more visible to customers. You can integrate flowers with your crop as well as with, the, with your vegetables. Flowers can be regarded as, as friends with benefits for plants on a permaculture farm. They can be used as companion plants, as we have seen in our previous module, Plants in Permaculture. They improve pollination and harvest. They provide nutritious edible food. They help manage weeds. Some flowering plants are nitrogen fixers and provide free fertilizers to plant. They help in pest and disease mitigation. Some flowering plants have herbal and medicinal value. Propagation of flowering plant. Plants propagate and reproduce from seeds or vegetation. Vegetative propagation can be done by cutting or division. Propagation of plants by cutting example is rose. Seed propagation, there are three kinds of flowering plants, annual, biennial, and perennial. Annual is a plant that is grown from a seed, matures, flowers, and sets seed within one year and then die. Annuals usually have long bloom period, but have to be replaced annually. Example, Coreopsis. Biennial. Biennial require two years to complete their life cycle. In the first year, seeds germinate and the plant grows a rosette of green leaves near the soil surface. It survives the winter and in the second year, produces stems with flowers. Perennials are plants that live more than two years. They have root system capable of surviving winter. At the end of each growing season, the leaves and stems above the ground die off. The root system produces new growth in spring. Perennials also propagate by rhizomes, tubers, bulbs, and combs. Rhizome, tuber, bulbs, and combs are underground stem and these underground stem are store energy and nutrients for the plant. Examples of bulb is daffodil, crocus, corn, dahlia tubers, bearded iris rhizomes. Here are a few examples of perennial plants that can be incorporated into a permaculture farm. Their location will depend on their height and root depth and according to the principles of companion plants, as we have seen in the module Plants in Permaculture. Here are a few more examples of perennial plants that can be incorporated into a permaculture farm. Bulbs. Bulbs consist of layers of modified leaves 
and contain a sprout in the center. If a lengthwise cross section cut were made, you would see a tiny stem and flower, as well as fleshy modified leaves called scales encircling the embryo. These scales serve as food reserve for the tiny plant. The bottom of the bulb is a compact stem and roots grow from this part of the bulb. Examples of bulbs are prairie lily, tulips, hyacinth, and daffodils. Combs. Combs are enlarged underground stems that store nutrients surrounded by papery outer layer. Combs are similar to bulbs but do not have fleshy scales. Combs are either rounded or slightly flattened at the top and have dry scales like scales. Held together at the basal plate where the roots grow. The parent comb die back but produces cormlets from buds on the top or side of the original comb. Comlets can be divided from the shrivel parent comb and planted separately. Examples of crumbs are crocus, gladiolus, cocosmia. Tubers. Tubers are thickened terminal portion of the stem. They are usually fat, round and knobby and do not grow horizontally. They have eyes or buds that create new shoot, which will become new plants. Tubers can be cut into sections containing at least one eye per section. Examples of tubers are daylily, dahlia, peony, and dunculus. Rhizomes. Rhizomes are stem-like structure that grow horizontally across the ground, forming roots from the bottom while sending shoots upward. Rhizomes have eyes or buds that appear along the top and sides, which grow upward to produce new stem and foliage. Rhizomes store nutrients for newly growing plants. Examples cans lilies and bearded iris. Common companion permaculture flowers. Ilium is perennial flower. It attracts pollinators and beneficial insects. Marigold is annual companion flowers. It helps repel aphids, deters root rot nematodes, and pests that attack tomato plants. Petunia is also annual companion plant flower. Petunia helps repel aphids, asparagus beetles, tomato hornbug, and leafhoppers. Nostrutium is annual companion flower. It attracts pollinators and beneficial insects, such as hoverfly, that eats aphids. It also helps repel cabbage loopers. Yarrow is perennial companion flower. It attracts pollinators and beneficial insects, such as hoverflies. It covers ground to suppress weed. Lavender is perennial companion flower. It attracts pollinators and beneficial insects. It has very pleasant smell and also used as herb. This concludes the module on going beyond plants. Thank you for your kind attention.